A common question at this level is to calculate the water of crystallization present in a hydrated salt. In this video, we will go through an exam style question to show you how to tackle these kind of problems. So 11.1 grams of hydrated copper 2 sulfate, CuSO4.XH2O, was heated to a constant mass of 7.09 grams. Find the water of crystallization X and give the formula of the hydrated salt. Well, the first thing we need to do when answering this question is remind ourselves what happens when we heat a hydrated salt crystal. When heat is applied to the solid, the water trapped inside is released as a gas. Molecules of water get released from the solid, leaving behind the anhydrous salt with no water, in this case, copper sulfate. Now, if the starting mass of the hydrated 2 copper sulfate was 11.1 grams, this means the combined total mass of the anhydrous copper sulfate, so the copper sulfate with no water, and the mass of water released must both add up to give 11.1 grams. Because remember, the law of conservation of mass tells us the total mass of reactants must be the same as the total mass of the products. Well, if 7.09 grams of anhydrous CuSO4 are formed then, the mass of water released must be the original starting mass of the hydrated salt, so 11.1, minus 7.09, which gives 4.01 grams. Great, now we have the ratio of copper sulfate in the crystal to water, 7.09 grams, to 4.01 grams. The only problem is we need to get this ratio into a molar ratio because remember the formula CuSO4 dot XH2O is a molar ratio which tells us that for every one mole of copper sulfate we have X moles of H2O. So we need to convert these masses here into moles. To do that we use the formula N equals M over MR, where M is the mass of our substance and MR is the molar mass of our substance, which is calculated by adding up the relative atomic masses of all atoms in the formula. The moles of copper sulfate then will be 7.09 divided by 63.5 plus 32.1 plus 4 times 16. This is because the relative atomic mass of copper is 63.5, the relative atomic mass of sulfur, 32.1, the relative atomic mass of oxygen, 16, and we have four of them in our formula, meaning we times the 16 by four. This gives us a number of moles of copper sulfate of 0 0.0444. OK, and now the same thing for water. 4.01 grams divided by 2 times 1 plus 16. 2 times 1 because we have two hydrogens in the formula and the relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 and plus 16 because we have one oxygen. This gives us moles of water of 0 0.222. Great, this means we now have a molar ratio, 0.0444 moles of copper sulfate to 0.222 moles of H2O. The only problem is we need to convert this into a 1 to X ratio, meaning how many moles of water for one mole of copper sulfate. Well, to find this molar ratio, all we need to do is divide both values by the moles of copper sulfate. 0 0.04444 divided by 0 0.0444 equals 1. And 0 0.222 divided by 0 0.0444 equals 5.01. Meaning we now have a molar ratio of 1 to 5.01. So 1 mole of copper sulfate to 5.01 moles of water. Basically 1 to 5. This means our X value equals 5 and the formula of our hydrated copper sulfate is CuSO4 dot 5 H2O. 
Well done if you've made it to this point in the video and you can understand these workings. You may see these questions answered in slightly different ways, but this is the way I like to approach them with students so they actually understand what's going on in terms of moles and molar ratios. Have a go at some of the more challenging examples in the worksheet given in the description below.